Hello everyone, this is Gail from Gail Julie Makes. I hope you're all well. I'm back in the crafting room today um, for a little bit of time, so I hope you can manage to get some time in yours too. Um, so today I'm going to be doing some image transfer and some alcohol ink technique that I've shown you before to sort of create a collage effect. I just thought I'd give it another go. Um, not entirely sure exactly what we're doing yet, but I've got a couple of images that I'm going to transfer. So I've got um, a statue and I've got um, the words, the art of letting go. Um, I think that's, you know, very relevant at the moment. <laughs> um, I've got some Payne's Grey Heavy Body by Liquitex, which is my favourite um, my favourite acrylic to lift, or well, to do an image transfer with. So it seems to generally work quite well for me. So, um, I'm going to lay a bit down. Put my brayer on there. So I'm just going to build it up a bit more gradually. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure what the final image is going to be like, but that's kind of part of the fun of it, isn't it? So, right, so I'm going to leave it about that for the transfer. Okay, and then I'm going to, so let's see if I pop that. black actually because that's kind of bigger than I remember so that, that text a bit more black over here it's going to go across quite a good chunk of it so that should, should do it okay so I'm going to pop that there and then I'm going to see if I can just get my statue I'm going to get part of it in, but pop it about there. And we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to obviously rub that in. And make sure I'm getting this one too. Now I'm using Country Life magazine, which is a UK magazine. Um seems to work well for me generally I hope I'm jinx myself um not laying that very well I've got a bit of a got some air bubbles so I'm hoping that's not going to affect the the text too much okay so let's see what we get so there we go, there's our statue, that's come out pretty well, if you can see that, yeah, you should be able to see that. And then, the art of letting go, yeah, there we go, we've got that nice bit of text there. Okay, so, what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm, have, I'm happy with a bit of black in there, but I don't want all of that black. So, I'm going to get some of this excess off. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it with some, with a wet wipe. Okay, so I kind of want, see what I'm doing, I'm just so I'm just kind of trying to keep this jagged sort of edge there okay. with my wet wipe. And then I'm going to get rid of most of this black. But I do like, I do want a bit of contrast around there as well. I'm going to go back in and get some of this harsh straight line out, see what I mean. Right. 
plate isn't the cleanest it's been today. I had a day yesterday of experimenting and um, <laughs> it wasn't that successful. You know when you have one of those days where you've got lots of great ideas and they don't quite... They don't quite turn out how you want them to, which is a bit frustrating, but, you know, you have to have those days, don't you? Otherwise, uh, you don't get the good days, I think. It's almost like your brain has to try things and then spend some time processing them, that's what I find. It's like your research, really. It's like when you, uh, you're using your sketchbook. It's like a video... Well, you've got, obviously you've got your physical work, but it's also a bit like a, a video sketchbook, I guess. And then you decide whether to keep it or delete it. I mean, I keep it all, but because when I did my art degree, my um, let my art lecturer was always saying, don't throw anything away. But when you've not got much space on your on your device, you know, when you're recording, you have to you have to make that move um, and get rid of them. But yeah, but it's fine. It's fine. It's all experimentation. Right. So I'm happy with that. I'll show you a bit closer up. Okay, so the text has come out well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a go at the old alcohol ink process again and some stamping. So I'm going to get a little bit of stamping on there. Um, let's just get this out of the way. So we're not going to need the um, the Payne's grey anymore for a while, for a while, unless I decide to add anything else. So I'm just going to get some stamping in there. Um, so I've got this embossing folder which has got just about make out it's got some text on it there um, well some handwriting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with some of my Versafine Claire again which is the um, permanent pigment ink and I'm just trying to work out which colour to do I might go for black again actually just because I want it to stand out fairly well or I could go for twilight no let's go for sorry I was using these yesterday so I'm just trying to find where I put it okay so I'm gonna go for the nocturne versafine Claire and um, we'll see what kind of prints we can get so I'm gonna go for that raised part of the embossing folder so you can actually feel it sticking out and um, this is like it's handwriting so you can't really sort of tell what it's what it says so it doesn't really matter which way around this is going to end up but so I'm going to print I'm just going to take a bit off those I don't really want the flower elements in at the moment I may bring them in later but I don't want them in at the moment so I'll just take away any bits that have gone on the edge there okay and we'll see what sort of print we can get from this so if I just press that into the corner good thing about the embossing folder is like it's because it's plastic and quite thin you can bend it quite easily so we've got that effect it's a little bit smudgy because of the nature of like you know how you place your ink on and then how you place it on there but that's absolutely fine and what i'll do again is i'll go in and oh, it dries pretty quickly, but I'll just rub some bits off just so it's not, you know, quite such a harsh edge on it. And the side there, there we go. Right, happy with that. Okay, and I've also got um, like a, this is a thinner bear stamp. This is like a, almost like a grater. Um, so it looks quite industrial. So I think what I'll do with this one is go in. I will go in with a different colour for this one. Give me my block. And we'll go in with, um, let's think, let's go in. Let's use Shady Lane, which is like quite a. Oh. Ah, this is when I put the wrong lid on things. <laughs> that should be there. That's third. And I can say, whoa, Shady Lane is not usually that bright. <laughs> Um, that's quite funny. Okay, so that was obviously in a rush last time I was doing this. Um, so I'm just going to lay a bit of this. I'm not really worried about it being straight. I'm just going to lay a few of these. Just in various places. Just to get a little bit more down. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just pressing that onto the stamp. And then I'm just going in. There we go. In certain areas, get a little bit more down there as well. Right, so happy with that. Okay. Let's just uh, stand that off a little bit. So it's just building up, really, on this one. Um, building up the layers. Okay, now there was there another stamp I wanted to use. Um, let me think. I'm going to get in the Macintosh. Let's see if I can use. Um, sorry, I'm kind of quite like these sort of story stamps that are quite I find quite interesting. I'll just see if I can get a decent print with these. So obviously being a teacher, I'm quite interested in sort of like images like that. So if I go for, let's go for a red. I know that's going to be a bit woo in your face, but I'm thinking because like a lot of people associate um, red with marking, don't they? And <laughs> teachers, boy, do they have to do a lot of marking. So let's just see if we can get. Let's just see if we can get some little bits of this. I don't want the whole thing. Just some little bits. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, a little bit like that. And maybe a bit down here. There we go. Okay, yeah, like that. So obviously that text is going to come out back to front, but that's fine. Okay, so I think what I'm going to start, so I might do one more layer with the stamping. And then I think, actually, let's just put those in there for now. And then I think I'll move on to, oh, I like this one. Then I'll move on to the actual alcohol ink technique that I was talking about. So, so I'm going to use, so I've got my Macintosh flower, which is um, very pretty. I haven't seen these Macintosh stamps anywhere. I'm, I've got these um, from a, a bundle that I bought off someone. Um, I love my Macintosh. So for Macintosh, I think I'm going to use, oh, Medieval Blue feels appropriate. Yeah. So we'll get a bit of the Medieval Blue in. Sorry, I'll just show you this. I'm doing everything off camera today, I don't know why. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just using medieval blue, which is almost like a lovely sort of bluish purple. And I'm gonna see if I can stamp. So let's get one down here. Beautiful sort of classic look this this has. And we'll go for let's go for one up here. So we're kind of layering up over previous sections now. Obviously, you can stamp again, so you get that, um, you get like a lighter shade of the colour. Hopefully, that won't detract from the tea too much there. Uh, I can always go for it with a pen, though, that's not really a problem. And we'll just get a bit more on there. Also, if you get any, if you're not used to stamping so much, if you get any in your block like that in areas that you know aren't actually part of the stamp, just give it a wipe because it will ruin what you're trying to do. It will ruin the effect. Uh, yeah, hang on that. But there, that's it. Okay. There we go. That's that one. Let's just stamp that off a bit, actually. Absolutely adore that stamp. Okay, so it's by Be Crafty. Be Crafty Polymer Stamp, inspired by Macintosh. I have no idea if they're still available, to be honest. I haven't got a clue. Um, okay, let's so turn that back the right way. Right, so now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring in that element. Um, that element of alcohol ink technique. So I'll just pause the camera and I just need to get a couple of more bits and bobs. 
Okay, right, we're back. So I've just got a few more tools that I needed. Um, so I've got my um, alcohol inks, I've got some cotton buds, I've got um, some blending solution. So that's the alcohol blending solution from um, Tim Holtz or my well, Ranger. Um, I've got my straws and I've got my brayer, I've got rolling off sheets, so um, let's give it a go. So basically I'll do the same as last time. I will get a fine layer of colour on here first. So I'm just trying to work out which colour to do. I think I might do a blue because either a blue or a honeycomb possibly because obviously I've got I've got none of that colour in my actual picture. Last time I usually tend to do peach bellini because it's quite light. I would use the citrus because I love that colour, but I think that's the problem is that's just gonna um, detect, um, like detract from the the greens that I've already used that shady lane colour. So I think I'll get in um, maybe a fine layer. Tell you what, I'm gonna go for the. I'm going to try the patina. And I'm not going to put lots on because I just want to get a fine layer, you know, on my plate. So I'm just going to brayer that on. Don't don't do it too much because it's going to start to detract you. You know, it's going to start pulling what you've already got on there. So I can see it's already started pulling off some things that I've already laid down. So it's a bit of a base layer, so it should give us a bit of a coloration. I've not done the whole thing, as I said, but I don't want to take away from the things I've already laid down. So I am going to, um, I'm going to lay down some colour in various places. And so that was the honeycomb, that's my favourite colour. And then I'm going to pop some blending solution on those. I should say while you're doing this as well, it's a good idea to have a window open. So I'm going to just quickly open mine. I've got a blind, so it's a bit tricky. Uh, go. Okay, so we've got that laid down and then I'm just going to use my straw to, to blow it around a little bit. So if I just move this in a little bit so you can see it a bit better. And you'll just see my, I'm already getting ink over myself. Baby wipe, baby wipe out the ready. And just be careful when you're using a straw. You can use one of these air blowers. I know Tim Holston does one of those as well. Or um, some people don't mind using hair dryers and things on their plate. I haven't tried that yet. So so basically just blowing that um, alcohol ink around the plate. So that's one colour. Now, what I wanted to try, so just make sure you put that down in a safe place where you know there's not anything sort of awkward lying around. What I did want to try was um, you can use cotton buds. Now, you can use the blending solution again. So I'm going to pop that on top again and it should just sort of narrow it down a little bit more. So it's kind of sp spreading it a bit more basically. And then I'm just going to go in with a cotton bud and just maybe take away some of those harsh, I quite like the way it's, you know, some, you do sometimes get some harsh lines that you might not want. Um, you can just dab at them with your, I'm not going to dab in this area too much because I don't want to take away that text. But it can just soften certain sections if you're not happy with them. You know, you can have a play with your cotton board and see where it takes you, really. So, <clears throat> another thing we can do is, um, where have I put it? Oh, 
have to find that. Um, is we can remove ink. I'm not going to do that today though, but we can remove ink with the lift ink remover. So um, <clears throat> that's another thing you might consider. So I'm going to go in with go in with a bit of patina I quite like some of those sort of splodged effects that you get to be honest so what I would think you can also try is I don't want to do that way at the moment where's my tissue gone so I've just loose left to find um <clears throat> yeah so we can leave that on that section there and we can dab at it just so it it kind of retains that sort of um you know it looks like it's been basically poured on it retains that look now so I quite like that about that and then we'll get some rust yeah, a bit of rust going on here. And I'm just going to go in. I'm not going to use the blending solution this time. I'll just show you how it moves around when you don't use the blending solution. <sighs> kind of retains its shape a bit much, which I quite like the way it's sort of laying down. If you don't if you don't you can kind of like blow into the straw a bit further away from the straw and it will retain its shape more if you go in closer and actually blow down the end then it will sort of give you that lined effect there there we go so I'm quite liking that and then we'll go for a little bit of um, eggplant, which is like a sort of purplish colour. And we'll take some of that up here. Just fill in some of those areas. We haven't really got anything. Um, then obviously we can put some on top of existing, existing um, areas of alcohol ink. Obviously, if this was on UPO paper, it would move a lot easier than it does on here. It's purely because it hasn't actually got like um, an easy surface to move around at the minute. You can apply hand gel to the base, um, which does allow it to move around a little bit easier. But I didn't really want to do that here um, because of like the fact that I was doing the... Um, the image transfer as well so you just got to bear in mind what you're doing really and you know where you can take it what combo you want to do this time that sort of thing so i'm just using a paper towel now to move it around and again you're getting a, a different effect again so that's good and you can use what's on your towel to kind of go into different areas okay so um i might just go for a bit more a bit of citrus down here okay. I like it when it pulls over another colour I think that's quite a nice effect okay so I'm just getting it ready to pull now sorry my storage ran out for a minute there I'm just going to run over some of the areas just to sort of um, a make sure it's dry and just sort of you know add a little bit more detail a bit more sort of natural detail so i'm just dabbing it with my cotton bud so there are some areas that i can tell are still wet so there's areas that look shiny basically so you can tell they're still wet so, so i'm going to lift it with um some and some good cardstock so it's about at least three i think it's about 300 gsm or it might be 250 but it's it's definitely a nice chunky card um, that i want to get the pull with and i'm going to try and get a last little bit out of my dina wakeley um book of acrylic because it's my favorite one and 
I know it does the job while it's pulling these, and I like the background colour. It's not going to be, yeah. Okay. Right, so let's go in. First of all, we'll try and get that image transfer area. So we can go a bit thicker over this area because we know that that's not, um, you know, that's not got the image transfer on it. Take a bit off there, and then we'll go try and get a bit lighter over that area. She says as she pulls more down over it. It's a tricky process, isn't it? Getting it right. But... So I'm going for lighter over the text, but I don't want it. To, I don't want to ruin it, so I don't want it too light. And then you see, I've got the the thicker areas and on the edge there. Right, we'll give it a go. So I'm pressing down with my card. Sorry, my camera's uh, going a bit mad. And I'm going to use my brayer. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do it that side, did I? Didn't mean to do it that way. <laughs> Let's do it this way. I've got that big bit there that I don't want, so I've ruined part of that now. Oh well. We'll brayer it and hope for the best. What an idiot. It'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, the amount of times that I've done that, you would not believe. Right, there we go, we've got a bit, it's a bit more in focus. We've got a nice big circular blob. Um, this is what I need to order, some new cardstock. I did get some cardstock, but I was really not happy with the quality, it's so thin. Um, so I'm kind of reusing bits, old bits that I know I'm not going to use, which is why that happens. I'll see if it was new, um, it wouldn't happen, but you know, it's just one of those things, isn't it? So... We'll see how we go. Please, 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 please work. Right, so it's lifting very awkwardly. Yeah, it's starting to obviously because I pulled off that layer, it's starting to um, tear a little bit, but go for it let's go for it from this side it seems to be handling it better so yeah that text is coming out quite nicely we've got some mist areas now but so we'd have to go in and fill out the bit where it says art but that's fine we can do that um, and then we'll have to go in and add some more areas here now. So I think what I'll do is, oh, that's really annoyed me, but it just goes to show these things happen, don't they? It's just, it's just the way it is. Um, but I like the way the statues come out. You've got to let go, haven't you? <laughs> just goes to show it's like exactly what I, um, exactly what I was going for with the statement. You've just got to let go. So, what I'll do is, I'll show you another quick technique, um, which is quite interesting. I will, I'm just going to go in some, with some more of these stamps, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of the alcohol ink on, so this gives me a chance to show you another technique. I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol ink actually on my stamp. So this is that thinner bear one again with like the great, um, that sort of greater effect, quite industrial. And I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to print in certain areas. So there we go. It's not got that sort of sharp, crisp line, but what we could do actually is we could go back in. If I just go back in, I'm not going to clean the plate off. Um, I'm just going to um, get a little bit more, let's get a bit more blending solution going on here. And we'll add a little bit more rust to that. 
like the way it's pulling there. Okay, and we'll blow some more of that around. Now the way we've got the alcohol ink laid down, we've got quite a lot of um, quite a lot now of the blending solution on there, so it's pulling differently, which I like. Okay. Yeah, I like that effect. With this bit here. That bit's not really moving, so what I'm going to do is sort of move some of it around. And you can start to do a bit of like your own mark making, really. So, yeah, so it's just adding something a bit more so I'm doing my mark making okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab that okay, taking away a bit of that mark making now so I'll just bring some of that back in and we'll just see how that looks on certain sections. So I'm just going to try and like bend certain areas and pull it. Yes, yeah, so we've got that sort of mark making there now. Okay, so that's quite nice. Um, we'll go for a bit at the bottom. Yeah, so I've got a bit coming in here now. And we'll go, because this is quite good actually, because it means I've got to get something on those sides now as well, because I'm blending it. I'm, I'm using what I've got on the plate. So there we go, look. So it's starting to build up. Um, and you can always obviously go in with Posca pens and, and gel pens and stuff and add a little bit more detail. So like I will go back in. Um, I've not got my black pen up here, but I will go back in and add that in. So I'll, I'll put that on the picture um, that I share on the page um, just to show you how I did that. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial, um, the art of letting go. It did partly go wrong at the end, <laughs> the most important bit when you're lifting it, but it's fine. It's I'm happy with like the way the um, the stampings come through. I'm happy with the way the image transfer um, came through there. Also, you could build up a lot more image transfer if you wanted to. But yeah, I'm happy with that on the whole. I'm just going to work on it a little bit more. So probably if you've seen it on... Um, the gelatin printer enthusiasts then it might look a bit more sort of worked than this stage here but you know it's just a question of just keep experimenting really so um i do hope you've enjoyed that video there are similar videos on my channel i have used this technique on a different picture but rather than image transfer i actually drew a picture with posca pen onto the play um so that's quite an interesting technique if you want to have a look at that one um if you click the um my profile picture there that will subscribe you to the channel but if you make sure you hit the bell when you do that um, for all notifications then it will let you know when i've got new videos coming out um bottom left here um if you click that that's that will link you through to that other video that i did with the alcohol inks where i used the posca pen on the plate so please do feel, to, feel free to leave me any comments. Um, I do like to get back to you and um, love talking about gel printing and the things we can do to experiment with it. So I'll see you all in the next one. Take care of yourselves and I hope you get some crafting time in real soon. Bye for now.